Nilesh Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week. This is Chile Shuki with another edition of weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. Help me fulfill my commitments. It's my best birthday gift, says His Holiness the Dalai Lama on his 84th birthday. His Holiness the Dalai Lama advises young Tibet Corps volunteers to preserve the distinct Tibetan culture. History made as Tibetan national flag unfurled and hoisted permanently in Italy. Niece of Tugutenzin Delek Rinpoche appeals President Trump for continued support and honorable return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. Tibetans and friends of His Holiness the Dalai Lama around the world marked his 84th birthday on 6 July. In a show of gratitude, the Tibetan spiritual leader thanked his admirers for the warm greetings on Wednesday last week. I am now 84 years old, but I hope to be able to celebrate the occasion with all of you for many more years to come, His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote, while also reminding his followers to act on what he calls his three lifelong commitments. I have said before that if you would like to make me a birthday gift, the best you can do would be to help me in fulfilling my three commitments, said His Holiness. The three commitments are promoting deeper human values based on a sense of oneness of humanity, to create a more compassionate society, encouraging harmony and understanding among the world's major religious traditions, and preserving the Tibetan language and culture, the heritage Tibetans received from the Masters of India's Nalanda University, while also working for the protection of Tibet's environment. His Holiness is also committed to reviving what he calls the ancient Indian Nalanda wisdom in modern India. The Tibetan spiritual leader His Holiness the Dalai Lama granted an audience to a young group of Tibetans volunteering under the Tibet Core program at various departments of Central Tibetan Administration at his residence on Friday last week. Speaking exclusively to the group, His Holiness acknowledged and commended the volunteers for their dedication to serve the community and emphasized the importance of Tibetan culture, language and tradition and counseled them to preserve the distinct Tibetan cultural heritage and language. The group consisted of 23 young volunteers who are part of Tibet Corps, a program initiated by the Central Tibetan Administration to encourage Tibetan university students, professionals and retirees to serve the Tibetan community through voluntary service in order to strengthen the community. <laughs> The President of Central Tibetan Administration wrapped up his official visit to Italy last week after a series of high-level engagements, most notable of which was the historic event involving unfurling and hoisting of the Tibetan national flag in the Italian city of Rovereto. The city of Rovereto hoisted the Tibetan national flag at the Bell of Peace on Saturday last week. The President of the Central Tibetan Administration, Dr. Lopsan Singe, joined Regent Senator Alberto Robol, Mayor Francesca Walduga, and Mr. Roberto Pintor, Tibet supporter in the official ceremony. It was an emotional moment for Tibetans as the magnificent multicolored flag unfurled to the tune of Tibetan national anthem and in the backdrop of mountains that resemble the enigmatic mountains back home in Tibet. The Tibetan flag will be permanently hoisted along with other 96 national flags. Speaking on the occasion, President Singe said, we commend the province of Trento for taking a courageous and political step by permanently hoisting the Tibetan flag, something that is a crime back in Tibet. On Friday last week, the governor of South Tyrol officially welcomed President Dr. Lopsan Singe. South Tyrol is Italy's northernmost region that has enjoyed an autonomous status since 1972. Drawing a parallel between the case of South Tyrol and Tibetans' quest for genuine autonomy from China's rule through the Middle Way approach, Dr. Singe said, South Tyrol's success is a great example for the Chinese government to study and emulate in granting Tibetans a genuine autonomy. President Singe also gave a public talk at the URAC Research Center, a think tank that has worked in partnership with the CTA for the last 25 years. Kasadel, Tibet on Wednesday last week marked the 20 years since the historic visit of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to 
the Canosa village of Italy by inviting president of the CTA, Dr. Lopsan Singhe, to the beautiful castle. Mayor of Canosa, Luca Bolondi, greeted President Singhe in his ceremonial tricolor flag sash. Recognizing the region's important role in hosting dialogues, that is, the historical encounter between Pope Gregory VII and Emperor Henry IV, Mr. Bolondi said, the mayor's office wants to help dialogue happen. While sharing the tragic story of Tibet, President Singhe remarked, we hope the dialogue spirit of Canosa will pass on to the cause of Tibet. The two members of the Italian parliament, Matteo Luigi Bianchi of the ruling party and Antonella Inserti of the opposition party were present during the event. On Tuesday last week, Santa Luce's mayor, Jamilia Carli, and president of the Central Tibetan Administration, Dr. Lopsan Singhe, attended His Holiness the Dalai Lama's 84th birthday celebration in Pomaya Santa Luce, Italy. Mayor Carli recalled receiving His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Pomaya in the past. In 2017, His Holiness became an honorary citizen of the region. Mayor Carli assured her full support for Tibetans in Pomaya and the CTA president hailed the mayor's principal stance vis-à-vis -vis the issue of Tibet and expressed the need for other world leaders to follow suit. CTA president's visit to Italy last week was organized by the Tibet Bureau Geneva in collaboration with the Italy-Tibet Association led by its president Namgyal Soba. U.S. President Donald Trump met with survivors of religious persecution in the Oval Office of White House on Wednesday. Niece of Tugutenzin Delek Rinpoche, Himal Hamu, was part of the delegation which included 2018 Nobel Peace winner Nadia Murad. Among the other survivors were Christians from Myanmar, Vietnam, North Korea, Iran, Turkey, Cuba, Eritrea, Nigeria and Sudan. Muslims from Afghanistan, Sudan, Pakistan and New Zealand, Rohingya from Myanmar, Jews from Yemen and Germany, a practitioner of Chow Dai from Vietnam and Yazidi from Iraq. Four people identified by the White House as being from China were Jewar Ilam, a Yuga Muslim, Yuhua Tang, a Falun Gong practitioner, Yimil Hamu, a Tibetan Buddhist and Mamping Yang, a Christian. All the survivors of religious persecution had a chance to meet with the president, during which Nimalhamu appealed President Trump for continued U.S. support for Tibet and the return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. Support, yeah. His Holiness the Dalai Lama when come back in Tibet. My English is not good. No, it's fine. Thank it's you fine. so much. Thank you. this opportunity to gather, share with story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And say hello. Please say hello, okay? Thank you, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It is reported that Trump's administration plans to announce new measures on Thursday aimed at protecting religious minority groups. Though no details have come to light yet, it is expected that Vice President Mike Pence and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will deliver speeches on the issue. The Tibet delegation who attended the ministerial to advance religious freedom comprised of the representative Mudup Siring and the staff of Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., Kunjo Domayakla, Special Appointee for Human Rights, Tibet Bureau, Geneva, members of International Campaign for Tibet, Azay Rinpoche from Nepal, and Gimal Hamu, niece of late Tugutenzi Delek Rinpoche. Gimal Hamu gave a compelling account as a survivor of religious persecution at the Track 2 breakout session on the second day. The ministerial was attended by more than 1,000 participants from more than 100 countries. Civil society, religious leaders, activists, policy makers, and government delegations attended the event. The representative attended an official reception at the top floor of the State Department later in the evening. So much for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. See you next week and have a great weekend.